Welcome to Fitness with Mr. Matthews and another GCSEP related video. Today, I will be talking to you about aerobic and anaerobic respiration. Before we begin, please do not forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell, and let's get straight into it. So I will begin by briefly outlining what the terms aerobic and anaerobic mean. So in simple terms, aerobic refers to respiration in the presence of oxygen. So oxygen is involved in aerobic respiration. Anaerobic respiration, on the other hand, means that respiration takes place in the absence of oxygen. In the examinations that you sit, aerobic and anaerobic based questions will usually be one, two or three marks, but they can, however, arise in questions more complex where four to six marks are available. So let's go into aerobic and anaerobic respiration in more detail. So far, we have concluded that aerobic respiration happens in the presence of oxygen. This means that aerobic respiration is usually associated with activities where intensity is low, meaning that these activities take place over a longer period of time. So if I were to give you a sporting example, you might mention marathon running. You can also link the performance of a football player to aerobic respiration. So talking about moments where they walk and jog around a football pitch. Anaerobic respiration, as we've summarized previously, it takes place in the absence of oxygen. So in terms of activity, what will this look like? Well, exercise will be completed at very high intensity and it will take place over a short duration of time. So if I were to give you some sporting examples, we could in fact talk about a netball player powerfully jumping to reach and catch a ball during gameplay. And we might also mention a 100 meter sprinter explosively and powerfully leaving the blocks to move from one location to the other. In your examinations, for those questions that are worth more marks, obviously you need to have more knowledge and more understanding. So it's important to remember in one chosen sport, you might in fact experience both aerobic and anaerobic respiration. We spoke about a marathon being predominantly aerobic based. However, it is important that we recognize that anaerobic respiration also occurs during a marathon particularly towards the latter part of a race where the athlete decides to sprint in an attempt to win the race. This is also applicable to football where an athlete might walk, jog, experiencing aerobic respiration, but then they will have moments where they jump to head the ball and explosively sprint towards the ball in order to gain possession. This would be an example of anaerobic respiration due to the change in intensity. What you also need to know is the equation for each type of respiration. The equation based questions that you complete in your examination are usually one mark. So let's begin with aerobic respiration. The following equation should be noted in this way. Glucose plus oxygen, equals energy plus CO2, carbon dioxide, plus H2O, water. This means that glucose combines with oxygen and as a result, energy is produced as well as carbon dioxide and water. The energy that is produced during this reaction gives us the fuel to meet the demands of aerobic exercise. And the equation for anaerobic respiration is glucose, equals energy plus lactic acid. So in this equation, there is an absence of oxygen, so oxygen is not included. And as a result, lactic acid builds up as a waste product. This is the result of anaerobic activity. And that nicely concludes today's session on aerobic and anaerobic respiration. Please, 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 if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. And also, if you found this video helpful, please do not forget to click the thumbs up. Thanks for your time. And as always, I will see you next week.